Okay, so today's daf is Pedaled. We are going to start nine lines from the bottom on Pe Gimel Amud Bet. We had discussed issues of spaces that are shared between two courtyards or other areas. And these two courtyards, for example, or, um, or two areas are not united in Eruv. So the status of whatever's in between them is always a problem. So the general principle that we follow is whoever has greater ease of access automatically is entitled to use that area to the exclusion of the other party that has less ease of access, has more difficult access. Um, if they have equal access, they prohibit one another and it can't, they cancel each other out, basically, or they overlap and therefore nobody can use it. If they uh, are fortunate, the, the, the ideal case is that only one has the upper hand, in which case they can at least use it. Okay? So now we say like this. So we compared different situations. What we have is three categories. We have what's called petach, which means that you have direct access to whatever this middle area is. You have what's called zrika, which means that this area is above you. It's elevated, so your access to it is, so to speak, throwing. Okay, but mean, it means to say you need to go up. Shilshul means you need to lower to get there. It's below you. So, the, so we know that petach is the most direct. If one side has petach and the other has any other form of access, whether it's from, a ta- from above or from below, definitely the one that has direct access on, a, on level ground is going to be the winner. Now, if one of them, if they both have one of these indirect forms of access, they're going to be considered equal. Okay? If both of them have petach, the direct access, they're going to be considered equal. And remember, that means neither one can use it. So the question that the Gemara left that we never took up yesterday because it takes us all the way through the next uh, daf, so I didn't want to take it up, is la zeba shilshul ve la zeba mai. So we know when one of them has direct access and the other one has one of the indirect forms that the one with the direct access wins. But what happens when one is from the bottom and one is from the top? In other words, one is, one, from one perspective, one courtyard or home has the uh, shared access below them and one has it above them. Do we assign one superiority in this case and say that winner takes all? Or do we say that no, they're basically even and therefore neither of them can use the space in the middle? And here we have a machloket. Um, so, Amar Rav, Rav says, Rav says, you know what? They cancel each other out. Neither of them has direct access. One has from above, one has from below. Neither has direct access, so therefore they're both equal. They both equally don't have, and therefore they both equally cannot use the area because they have equal, an equal level of access, which is partial. Let's say, or uh, difficult access, whatever you want to call it. Bikashe, they call it. Okay? Alternatively, So, like, the idea is that, let's say you have a courtyard on, on ground level, Okay? And in the courtyard is a pillar. And then you have next to it a motel that has a uh, second floor. So the second floor people come from the top. They come from above that pillar. The people on the ground level come from below the pillar to reach the top of the pillar if they want to use it. Okay? So according to Rav, that's equally troublesome for both because the people who are above it have to go down to get to it. The people who are below it have to go up to get to it. So each one is, has an equal hand in it. And if they have an equal hand in it, that means nobody can use it because it's a shared space without an roof. Okay? Shmuel's says, no, the one who comes from above, going down is always easier than going up. If you have a choice of going up the stairs or down the stairs, you'd rather go down, right? Going down is better. So therefore, he says, that's benachat, that's, more, that's easier. So the one who's coming from above and going down, the one who's on the second floor or going down, is going to be the one that, ha- that wins access to this shared area, according to Shemuel. This is the machloket. Now we're going to take another daf to try to figure out who's right. Okay? Now, so, and because the principle, he says, the principle is kol shetash we show. In any case that you have that shilazet hashvisho benachat, lazet hashvisho bekashe, v'chol davar shetash we show lazet benachat, lazet bekashe, not nimot lazet shetash we show benachat. Our general principle is that whenever you have one person who has greater ease of access than the other, you give it to the one who has the greater ease of access. Period. So it should be a davar pashut. Should be obvious. Tenan we learned in the Mishnah. 
אנשי חצר ואנשי מרפסת שיחכוב לו ערבו. If you have people in the courtyard and people on the מרפסת, the מרפסת again is this elevated area, you could think of it as the second floor of a, an adjoining building. And they did not make an ערב with one another. So כל שגבוה עשרה טפחים למרפסת, פחות, so anything which is ten טפחים high. In other words, if there's a pillar sitting in the courtyard that's ten טפחים high. So the top of the pillar is closer, let's say, to the people on the מרפסת than it would be to the people in the courtyard itself, because people in the courtyard are going to have to climb up, and the people in the Merpeset have greater ease of access, so in that case we say it belongs to the Merpeset. Pachot mikam lechatzer. So if it's any less than that, if it's shorter than ten tefachim, we say that, you know what, it's easier for the person on the ground to uh, go, it's just nine tefachim, it's no big deal, we give it to the chatzer. Okay? Now, the Gemara says, kasal kedatach mai Merpeset, b'nei aliyah. Now, Keep in mind that what we're considering mirpeset here, and this is an important ca- clarification that happens twice in the Gemara, because what happens is that the Gemara proceeds, it's going to correct the assumption and then go back to the previous assumption. So what we're talking about here, just to illustrate, is we are co- talking about a situation. Um, let me see, where's the uh, example that they give? Um, so that we can picture it. We are talking about a situation that looks like this. Okay. But you have, this is picture number 277. I'm sorry, 274. So what you have is, um, is that it? 274? Yeah. That's the Mishnah. Yeah, 274. Um, yeah, you're right, that's the Mishnah. So where's the Gemara's version of it? Um, oh, here, sorry, 278. Picture 278, not 277. Number 278. So what you have here is, you have people who have these upper windows, you see? So you have people who live, basically what you have is you have a ground floor. There's the ground floor. Then you have to climb up to what's called here the mirpeset, which is kind of like a deck. Okay, or a porch. And then above that is where the people actually live in the aliyah. The aliyah is the actual second floor. So what you have is three levels. You have ground level, you have middle level, and you have the people living actually in those windows. And the Gemara right now is assuming that the people who live in the middle, the people who live in the upper windows are the ones that we're talking about. Okay? Not the people who live lower than that. So what's the chidush here? What's the point here? He says, V'umay karule. Why do we call these people, the people who really live up in these windows, the mirpeset? Because they have to come up to the mirpeset and then they go up another flight of stairs to get to their actual house. So there's two flights of stairs. There's level, there's the landing, basically. And then you have to, and that's what's called the mirpeset. And then there's the aliyah, which is when you go up to the actual next floor. Like when you go in a hotel or in an apartment building. You climb up one flight of stairs and you're just at a landing, usually. It's not the next fl- floor yet. You have to go up another one. So that's what we're talking about. But in, in, in ancient times, yeah. for security purposes, the way that they would prevent people from getting into their homes was that they had these ladders mm-hmm. that went out the... Oh, that came off of your pesets. And the only way you could get into the house, the way they secured the house, they would pull the ladder up. Uh-huh. That makes sense. So that the only way you could get into your home is you had to climb up this, this ladder. Right. That's why they... Well, that makes sense. That's, 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 that's what they're showing here. Nowadays, they're pesets. given it because that's where they can reach the... Well, so so this is the point. So now what we're what we're assuming is here. So the point is that in the Mishnah it says that this pillar that's sitting in the courtyard, okay, is accessible to both with a tircha. It's difficult. Why? Because these people have to let's say lower a bucket or lower something down on a string to get to the pillar. Or they have to do like Spider-Man, you know, lower down. And the people who are down here on the floor have to climb up onto the pillar. So what do you see? The Gemara says that if this pillar is taught, or the Mishnah really says that if this pillar is more than 10 tefachim, we give it to the people in the window. Even though the window are not much closer physically, in physical proximity, they're not closer to the pillar than the people in the courtyard. The people in the courtyard are down here below. The people in the Aliyah, the people who are living in this building on the second floor are much higher. They're much further away, but they lower things down to the pillar, and people in the courtyard have to bring things up to the pillar. So once the pillar is ten tefachim, which means it's not considered to be within the immediate airspace of the courtyard, we automatically give it to the people who live all the way up here, all the way up top, because they're going to be lowering things down onto it, or people down onto the pillar. They're not going to be lifting up. Okay. Now, that's the assumption of the Gemara. So what do you see then? 
that clearly lowering is superior to lifting. Because we see that even though they're much, much higher than the pillar, we still give, prefer- uh, we still give preference to preferential rights to the people who are lowering, not to the people who are going up. So now the Gemara says, no. We're going to take what Rav Huna said here because What we're talking about here is not the people who live on, up here. Not these people. We're talking about people who actually live at the Mirpeset level. So they don't live all the way up here in these windows. In other words, we're talking about a case where this Mirpeset is actually the level where the people live. It's not what we were saying, not what we were guessing before that the, um, not what we were suggesting before that the Mirpeset is the midpoint and really the people live far above the pillar. We're talking about where the people actually live on the level of the Mirpeset, which means that they're actually not that far from the pillar. Like next to Okay, they're right, right. So they're kind of right next to the pillar. So the picture he's showing in 274 is more accurate then. Yeah. Right, exactly. The one on 274 is actually what they're now saying. It's people who live on the level of the Mirpeset. So therefore, why is it ease of access? Not because they're lowering, just but just because they're right next to it. They're just right next to it. It's called Petach. It's direct access. That's why. Not because it's indirect, but it's lowering, so it's better. But because it's direct, it's right next to them. So obviously, lowering an object. Any yeah, any moving of vertical on the vertical plane is complicated. Okay, but if it's right next to you, that's called peta. It's it's to, it's direct access, and if it's direct access, we know that's superior to moving up. If the people in the chater have to move their items up onto the pillar, that's always going to be inferior to the people who are here and can just go right onto it. They don't have to go up or down. But it doesn't prove that going down is better than going up because these people are not going down. They're actually at the same level as the p- pillar. Because we're talking about people who actually live on this level. So this kind of case, as far as the Gemara is concerned now, it doesn't exist. Right, that case doesn't exist. Exactly. So that case was like what they thought, but it's not, not the real case. Yeah, if that's true, what about the end of the Mishnah? It says that if the pillar is lower than ten Fahim, it belongs to the Chatzir. But wait a second, am I? Wait a second. Now, once we say that actually we're talking about people who live on this middle point, not people who live all the way up top, but people who live in the middle point. So even if this pillar is only nine fachim, it's still within reach of the people on the mere peset. Because we have a rule that anything within ten fachim is called petah. Anything within ten fachim is called direct access. So that's why if the pillar is less than nine fachim from the ground of the chatzer, it's con- the top of the pillar is still considered direct access for the people on the, in the courtyard. And since the mirpeset is low, so it's also going to be within ten fachim of the top of that pillar. So, that's equal so it should be equal access. It shouldn't belong to the chatzer. They have equal access. So the Gemara says, that's right. You're absolutely right. Actually, what it meant was It even belongs to the Chatzar. Once it's nine Tvachim in height, now it's equal access to both the Mir Peset and to the people in the Chatzar. The only time it becomes exclusive direct access to the people in the Mir Peset is when it's ten Tvachim tall. When it's ten Tvachim tall, now it's out of easy reach to the people in the courtyard, but it's still within easy reach to the people who are standing on the Mirpeset. If it's nine Tvachim, it's easy reach to both. Easy reach to both is no good, actually. That's the problem. Because they don't have an eruv with one another. Ah, so now the Gemara says, and hachinami mistabra. It actually makes more sense to learn this way. Because it says at the end of the Mishnah, when are we talking about that the pillar and the courtyard have this conflict of access? That's only when the pillar is close to the building. But if it's far away from the building, then even if the pillar is 10 Tvachim in height, it belongs to the Chatzir. So the Gemara says, What do you mean it belongs to the Chatzir? If you're telling me that it belongs to the courtyard and the courtyard people are allowed to use it, Amai. Why should that be? Rishuta de Tarvayuhu. It actually belongs to both. Why? Because let's say it's 10 Tefachim tall. And it's 4 Tefachim away from the building. So both of them have difficult access. The people in the courtyard have to reach up 10 Tefachim. And the people in the Mir Peset don't have to go vertically as far. But they have to go horizontally. Because it's far away from them. It's 4 Tefachim away. 
But why is it? But in the end, in the final analysis, both of them have difficulty because the people in the mirpeset have to travel a little bit vertically and horizontally, and the people who live in the courtyard have to travel ten tefachim horizontally. So really, it should be equal. So the Gemara says, "Ela mai lechatzer af lechatzer ushneim asurin hachinami or hachanami mai lechatzer af lechatzer." So ushnehen asurin shemamina. So basically, what do we determine? We determine that basically the pillar in the courtyard, when it's ten tefachim tall. Okay, and it's within four tefachim of the mir peset, then it's going to belong to the mir peset. If it's more than four tefachim to the, from the mir peset, what are we going to say? We're going to say that both the people in the chatzer and the people in the mir peset have difficulty, so therefore it belongs to both of them. When it's nine tefachim tall and it's close to the mir peset, again, we're going to say it belongs to both of them and they're both not allowed to use it. So... So that's what the Gemara concludes. And now, what, what does that mean? That means that we still have not reached a conclusion about what about where the people in the Mir Pesed have to go down 10 full Tfachim to reach it, and the people in the courtyard have to go up a full 10 Tfachim to reach it. We want to know what's better, going down or going up, or are they equal? Mm-hmm. We haven't found a case of that yet, because this case is where, where from the perspective of the Mir Pesed, you're not going down that much to get to the pillar, so it, it doesn't really count is going down. We haven't had a real case of that yet. So now we have to now look at the next part, the next teaching in the Mishnah. We said that if you have Bor, you have a pit and the pit has an embank- embankment or you have a big rock and it's 10 Tfachim tall. Okay, the embankment around the pit is 10 Tfachim tall or the rock is 10 Tfachim tall. Now, if it's 10 Tfachim tall, it belongs to the Mirpeset. If it's less than 10 Tfachim, then it belongs to the courtyard. Okay, now the Gemara says, and now again we are discussing. The Gemara is saying, we are, is assuming at first, why does it raise this at first? It raises this at first because at first it's operating with the assumption we started with that we're talking about the people who are living up, up top in the building. And that's why Rav Huna says, Amar Rav Huna, otana darimba mir peset. We are talking not about the people who live all the way up top. We're talking about the people who live on the mir peset itself. So therefore, again, we're talking about a case where the mir peset, from a vertical standpoint, is directly opening to this spot. So we don't learn anything about lowering yet. We don't have a case of lowering. And incidentally, as the Mepharshim explained, this was the original context of Rav Huna's statement where he clarified the case. That's why in the first, the first time the Gemara brought it up, it said, Kid de Amar Rav Huna, like Rav Huna said about these cases, it's talking about people living on the Mirpeset, on the middle point, not on the top. Um, but it's brought out of order in the Gemara because the Gemara was following the order of the Mishnah, not the order of when Rav Huna actually said it. Rav Huna actually said it on this case. But it doesn't matter. The point is that we're talking about where the Mir Peset opens directly. So if that's the case, so Tenach Sela bor Ma'ikel So we understand with the Sela, we understand with the rock. But a, but a pit, I mean, a pit, no matter what, you're going to have to go down. Right? Even if the edge of the pit is... On, is at an equal level with the mir peset. The fact is, the inside of the pit goes down, and we assume it goes down ten tefachim. How could it be at the, how could the edge of the pit is ground level? No, we're talking about a pit that reaches up. In other words, it's a, some kind of a, let's say a cistern or whatever above ground, or or it's an embankment. You know, depending on how the ground is structured, it could be that there's a there's a, there's an elevation there. Uh, so the walls of this cistern or whatever it is are. Um, you know, are 10 tefachim tall. So they, if I'm standing on the mir peset, I see the edge of it right next to me. But the fact is, if I want to get what's inside, it's 10 tefachim down. So why isn't it a case of lowering? Should be a case of lowering. I'm going to have to lower my bucket down, let's say, to get the water out of there, if there's water in the bottom. So the Gemara says that we're talking about here, Amar Rav Yitzchak, Bereid Rav Yehuda, Rav Yitzchak, the son Rav Yehuda, says, Hacha Bebor, Mele Amayim Askinan. We're talking about a pit that's full of water. And since it's full of water, the top surface is within direct access of the mere peasant. Because the water is 10 fachim tall, and the, 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 the top of the pit is 10 fachim tall. So uh, it's also at ground level, or at mere peset level. The water is direct access. Yeah. So mere peset level. That's what's in the pit. That's what's in the pit. Yeah. Right? So, that, so, it's, it, it's at, so therefore, it's not a case of lowering, because the surface is... At equal level with the mir peset again, but then the Gemara says, "But wait a second, veha chasra." But it's going to lower when you take water out. 
So how can you say it's at equal level with the mirpeset? I mean, it's going to go down as you take water out. So the Gemara says again, Kevan de Kimalia Sharia ki Nami Sharia. Since when it's full of water, it's per, it's a permitted area because the surface of the area is uh, is um, you know level with the mere peset. So therefore, even when it gets diminished, we continue with its original status and say it's level with the mere peset. The Gemara says, but Adarabah, why don't you argue the opposite? Kevan de Kichasra Asira ki Malia Nami Asira. Maybe we should say the opposite. That since we know that the filling the the full of it is only temporary because you're going to withdraw the water so therefore we should say it's prohibited from the beginning and it's not considered level with the mere peset because really what you want is the water and the water level is going to lower so therefore what do we say that it can't be talking about water we must be talking about a pit or a, that is full of perot it's full of something solid and since it's full of something solid it's not going to be lowered but wait a second, but again, aren't you going to remove fruit from the pit? And it's also going to get lower. And therefore, the surface is not going to be equal with the mere peset. The answer is, but tivla. We're talking about tevel. We're talking about untithed produce that they would put in this pit and they would leave it in this pit. And on Shabbat, it's muktzeh, so they can't move it. So therefore, that surface is going to remain level with the mere peset the entire time. If you want to jump onto that surface and sit on there, you could. Okay, I guess you could sit on the teva. Just, right? just for clarification, yes. is that the, the, the whole business of why people want to use the tower? I mean, what's the advantage of having this, this, this tower, this column? And what is it for? Yeah, what are people going to do with I don't know. I don't know what they do. Or is it just trying to teach the concept? I guess it's more for the concept, but I'm sure that they had pillars that they used for things, but I don't know. Like you have today in parks, you have different you know structures people will sit on or they put things on. I mean, I don't know. Well, if, if they had the so, security uh, system back then... Like that, that would be another story, right? Medieval, medieval, you know, but they were talking about a pillar in the Chatzar, though. Right, but right. people might have left things. Instead of dropping your ladder down, someone may have left something for you at this... In an elevated oh, spot that it's hard to get to. Grab, could be. Grab, yeah. you know, could be. Could be. Drop the ladder down. I don't know what it functioned as. It could be multi, multi-purpose. So, Dikanami, it's also a proof. Dikatane dumyad de sela. Shimamina, that's why it teaches these two cases as similar to the rock. In other words, it teaches the case of the pit and the rock as one case. Now, if the pit is something where the content lowers over time, then it wouldn't be similar to the rock. So, we see that we're talking about something that remains solid. Now what's the point of inventing a case that's so unusual? It's to invent a case in which the pit doesn't lower. So therefore we're not talking about lowering from the perspective of the mere peset because we're trying to not disprove let's say uh, Rav's position. Rav says that whether you're going low or you're going high, it's the same. Okay, whether you're going up or down, it's the same. Shmuel said, no, we give preference to the one who's going low. Lower is going down because that's easier. So if this were really talking about a pit of water that goes down, it would kind of prove Shmuel. Because why is it telling us that this pit that's ten tefachim high is considered more the possession of the people who live on the Mirpeset, on the elevated area? Oh, because they access it by going downwards. That makes sense according to Shmuel. Rav has to defend himself. He says, no, 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 it's not talking about where they go downwards. It's talking about where it's level with them. That's why. So that, that's the whole logic here. So then, why do you need both cases, the case of the pit and the case of the rock? Because if all we had was the rock, because you might say there's no reason for a gezerah in the rock case. The rock is not going to become diminished over time. However, but when it comes to a pit that's full of various objects, it could happen that you'll have a pit full of objects that will be removed on Shabbat, such as fruit that's mitukanim, fruit that has has been tithed and therefore could be moved. And therefore at the beginning of Shabbat, maybe this was level with the mere peset, but over time it becomes lower. And now it's equally accessible to both the people in the chatzer and the people in the mere peset. And then therefore, according to Rav, it will be prohibited to, to transfer things to and from this pit. So you might have thought that they'd make a gzerah, that even in a case where the perot are not going to be moved, you can't use that pit. So therefore it comes to tell you that in fact you can use it and you don't have to worry about a case where it wouldn't be allowed to be used. Okay? So now Tashma, we come in here. So now we still haven't resolved the machloket between Rav and Shmuel because every case that, Shmuel, that is adduced to prove Shmuel, Rav has a, ca- 
it has a way to refute it or to defend himself, to block it. So now, Tashma come and listen on If you have a case of an upper story and a lower story, a ground floor and an upper floor that did not make an eruv with one another, that anything that's the, the upper tent fachim of the wall belongs to the upper story. The lower tent fachim belong to the lower story. Okay, the ground floor. So what does that mean? If there's something protruding from the wall, if it's lower than ten tfachim. In other words, imagine one big wall. Some people live at the ground floor. Some people live on the second floor. Okay? So the people who live on the second floor don't have a relationship with the people on the first floor, on the ground floor. So there's something protruding from the wall. If it protrudes within ten tfachim of the ground, it belongs to the people on the ground floor. And the person who lives in the upper floor cannot put something down on that protrusion. If the, if the protrusion is in the upper ten tvachim of the wall, that's obviously within the purview of the people who live up top. Now, what's the case here? Habene bene asur. The implication is that in between the two of them, let's say something juts out, not in the upper ten tvachim, and not in the lower ten tvachim, but in the middle, in between them, there, since they share that wall space, anything that protruded in between the two levels would be a shared protrusion. And because it's a shared protrusion, it's completely prohibited. That's the implication, right? Because it says that something which is in the upper tent fachim of the wall belongs to the upper story. Something that's in the lower tent fachim of the wall is in the lower story. So let's say that this, let's say that this wall is a hundred fachim. So that means that the upper tent fachim belongs to the upper story. The lower tent fachim belongs to the lower story. But the 80 fachim in the middle is shared space. So if something protrudes from the wall in the shared space, it's going to be no good. And what do you see from this? This actually supports Rav. Because you see that even even though the people in the upper story would be lowering onto that, and the people from the upper and in the lower story would be lifting onto that because it's in between them, and yet it's considered shared space and, and is prohibited for use by both of them, which supports Rav, who says that because according to Shmuel, what should we say? According to Shmuel, we should say that the upper story gets it because they're lowering onto that protrusion. And the people in the lower story are lifting under that protrusion. So really we should give preference, preferential rights to the people in the upper story. And we don't do that. So therefore it is a proof for Rav, it would seem to be. 281. Okay. Now, yeah, so this is the picture 281. It doesn't help that much. So I think it's pretty clear. Okay, now... Amar of Nachman, Rav Nachman says, "Acha b'kotel tisha asar askinan." Shmuel will get out of this problem. Don't think that you cut Shmuel. There's no way he's going to be caught after all these uh, good proofs that Rav had to deflect. He's not going to be. He's not going to come up short on the uh, at the end of the day. So Shmuel says, "No, we're taught." Rav Nachman will defend him and say, and Rav Nachman, by the way, was Shmuel's student because you always find in the Shas, Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Shmuel. Right, Rav Nachman always reports in the name of Shmuel, so you could see that it was he's defending his teacher. He says, uh, don't, "Don't think you're going to get him." Because he'll say that, what are we talking about here? A wall that is less than 10 tefachim tall. In other words, it's 19 tefachim. So therefore, And what ends up happening then? If the protrusion is within 10 tefachim of the ground, what does that mean? That it belongs to the ground, and it's also more than 10 tefachim away from the people above. And if the people, and if it's above, if it's in the upper ten tefachim, that means it's eleven tefachim from the ground. In other words, there's no middle. There's no middle. It's only nineteen tefachim. It's only nineteen tefachim. So there's no middle. So that means if it's within ten, if it's within reach of the people up top, it's by definition above the people below. And if it's within reach of the people below, it's by definition being lowered by the people above. So therefore, there's, there's no case of lowered versus lifting. There's only ca- a case of either direct access versus lifting or direct access versus lowering. Because there, so there's, cause there's no middle wall. There's no middle part where both the, both the people below and the people above are stretching. One is stretching down, one is stretching up. You don't have such a case. You only have a case where one is directly accessing from, a t- from above and one is lifting, or one is directly accessing from below and the other is lowering. 
But that we already know. That's not even. The game is not even. And we're trying to find a case where you have lowering versus lifting and where lowering wins or lifting wins. And that's not what you have here. We thought we had that. We thought we showed that they were tied. That was what Rav was trying to show. Shmuel says, no, we're talking about a case where one has the upper hand. It's not a tie. So now we turn to Amud Bet, Tashima, come and listen. Shrite gezuz traot zolim ala mizom. So this, for this it's good to look at the picture. So what we're talking about here is a case where um, you have two gizustra ots. You have two um, protrusions from the wall and they're over water. And what happens is that they want to... Now we know that there's a halakha. That the water, the... the the body of water is a karmelit, right? So we learned before that one of the tricks that you can do is you, go, you have this protrusion here. You have this kind of a um, platform. And the platform has a hole in it. And the, there is a, um, there's a sort of a... Uh, you make four walls around... A shaft. What? Like a shaft, exactly. You make like a shaft of four walls around that hole. And so now you lower a bucket within the airspace of that, that shaft. Now the shaft doesn't extend all the way down to the water, but it creates as if it's a Rishut HaYachid, and we imagine as if those walls extend all the way down to the water. So when your bucket goes down to the water and lifts the water out of the, out of the Carmelite, we're considering the entire thing to be a private space. So because the, because it's the un- shaft has to be uh, ne- less than nine fa- less than It has to be ten Tvachid, and four by four to make a Rishut HaYachid. But we extend that Rishut HaYachid all the way down. Now, but here you have two platforms. You have somebody who's on a somewhat lower platform, next to it, okay? And, one, and the one that has the hole in it is actually a little bit elevated. It's a little bit higher. Now they're not one on top of the other. They're one next to the other with the elevated one being the one that has the hole and the one that has the bucket that gets lowered, okay? And these two individuals don't have any roof with one another. So we have a problem. Because if the person in the lower one wants to get water, he's going to have to draw the water from the one that's elevated, right? Because they're the one that has the bucket and they're the one that has the shaft created to be able to draw the water. Okay, that's illustration number 282. So what happens here? What's the, what's the relevance here? So the relevance is that what do you see? What's, so the halakha is that if you have for the elyona and not the taktona, shtehen asurot, they're both going to be prohibited. Why are they both prohibited? Because the upper one and the lower one don't have an eruv with one another. And yet the upper one is shared space for both. Because the people in the lower one need to use the upper one to be able to draw water. So they, they both share that platform, and yet they didn't make any roof. Now, the way that the people who are in the lower one are going to share it is by raising and lowering. Because they need to raise their bucket up to the upper platform and then lower it. Whereas the people on the upper platform just lower it. Why they don't have raise it. Why is it for the ones in the upper platform? Say again? Why is it not permitted for the upper? Because the they, because they share the, the space now. Because they share that platform. Just from the mere fact that they have to use Forget about the ladder because we're not up to that yet. We're up to that one. But, but from the fact that they use it. Anytime you have a space that's shared, that two people have rights to use it. In other words, two people have an entitlement and they use it. So automatically you need to have an Eruv Echatzerot. And since they both share that upper that platform, they are sharing it because they, they use the it. They both use it normally. So if there is, a, okay, they don't need a ladder in that case. They both typically use it. No, Rashi explains. So Rashi explains that they both own that shaft. Ah, okay. okay, I forgot to mention right. that. They both own that shaft. So they actually have rights to that shaft. Ah, okay. okay, but they're situated lower. So in order to use it, you're going to have to lift up. Okay, and the, whereas the people on the upper one are going to lower down. Now, if lowering down were superior to lifting up, then we should just say, hey, the people in the upper shaft win. Since they don't have an eruv, and we have to decide who has rights to this, the people in the upper shaft have easier access. Why do they have easier access? Because they only lower. The people in the, in the lower position have to raise before they lower. Raising is inferior. 
So what do you see from that? According to, according to, Rav is right, because if Shmuel were right that just lowering is better than raising, so then we would say that the people in the upper, sha- in the upper position are the ones who are in a better place, because they just have to lower their bucket. The people who are in the lower, on the lower platform have to raise their bucket, and according to Shmuel, that should make them inferior, because they have to raise. According to Rav, it works perfectly. Why is the platform prohibited? Because raising and lowering are both equally bad. So they both equally have difficult access. The people in the upper position have difficult access because they have to lower. And the people in the lower position have difficult access because they have to raise and lower. And it's all the same. I think it would be because they have to do more work. Lowering versus lowering. You mean quantitatively? So there's a, some total... Well, it seems, it's a good point, but I think according to Rav, he's basically saying once it's not direct, Rav's vara is like this. Once it's not direct, it's all the same. That seems to be the position of Rav. In other words, according to Shmuel, we look at matters of degree, right? We say, well, this one, it's, they're both difficult, but this one's less difficult because he's just lowering. This one is more difficult, he's raising, or he's raising and lowering. Whereas Rav says, once you're not direct, it's all equal. And Rav says, that seems to be what it is here. Right? But right? you're not evaluating the level of difficulty because... We're not evaluating the level of difficulty. We right. say there's two categories, direct, one is direct and not direct. And one is level of difficulty. Right. And that's where the disagreement is. Rav is saying there's only two categories. There's no matter of degree. There's, you have direct access, or, not direct. or it's trouble to get there. Right. We don't care if you're going up, down, spinning, right. jumping. Trouble I don't care. Right, it's trouble for both. Right. Whereas Shmuel will say, no, no, even within di- indirect access, we make a distinction. Is it more indirect? Is it more different? So that, that's really the machlok. So, so what, is, what is this being pr- brought to prove? This shows you that, look, Rav is correct. Because we don't say that, well, since the people in the upper platform have an easier access, an easier use, therefore we're going to say that they're more entitled than the people who have to go up and then down. We say that they're both equal. Even though one has to go up and then down and the other one just has to go down. So the Gemara says no. Amar Rav Adabar Ahava, Rav Adabar Ahava says, Bevayin bnei tachtona derech elyona limalot. We're not talking about a case where the people in the lower platform lift their bucket and then lower their bucket. We're talking about where the people on the lower platform have a ladder that they themselves go there and they just lower their bucket. They walk up the steps and lower it. So in the actual transfer, there's no difference. In other words, in the actual um, going from platform to water, there's no difference. They both just lower. True, one has to walk up a, a, a flight of stairs. But in the actual usage of that platform, of the upper platform, there's no difference. It's not like we lift something up and then we lower it through. We walk up to the platform. Walking up to the platform, nobody ever said that you didn't have to walk somewhere. So the fact you have to walk somewhere doesn't make a difference. Right. It's access to being able to get to the, the water hole. Because the water hole is the issue. Okay? So, so, so here, this doesn't assume the level of difficulty. So we're not it's assuming the level of difficulty. It's just direct or right. not direct. So that's what they're saying. They're saying even Shmuel will agree here that it's equal access. Because the people, they're both just lowering. There's not one lifting and one lowering because the, they're both lowering. It's just that one has to walk up a few steps before they lower. And one is already there. But so what? That's not really a significant difference, according to Shmuel. Abaye Amar Abay says, Kegon de Kayamin betoch asarad de hadade. We can make another okimta. We can solve this in another way and say that these two platforms are the reason why it's shared space is not because necessarily you have to have a ladder between the two of them. That's not what's important. What's important is they're within ten tfachim of one another. And since the two platforms are within ten tfachim of one another, we judge them as one rishut. And if there's no eruv between the two of them, they're both going to be considered prohibited. Okay, we don't say that, um, that the upper one is different than the lower one because they're within ten fachim of one another. So we, we judge them all together. And it's telling you a case of lomi baya. It's not necessary to say lomi baya asul tachtona v'lo asul leelyona da asirei. The kevan de bego yud de hadadei kayemin asrana hadadei. Ela apilu asul leelyona v'lo asul tachtona salga da tach amina. Kevan de lezeb nachav lezeb kashe letevei lezeb shitesh miyob nachat. Kamash malan. Okay, kevan de bego asara kayemin asrana hadadei. So what he says is like this. That obviously when they made it for the lower one, 
Okay, in other words, when they made the, uh, the access through the lower of the two platforms, okay, there, since they're within ten tefachim of one another, okay, so certainly they're both, and they're both going downwards because the people from above are going downwards and the people on the lower one are going downwards. There's no, there's no question that they're going to prohibit each other. But the truth is that even if they made it in the upper platform where one is having to go up and the other one is just having to go down, still, since they're within ten tefachim of one another, we judge them all as one platform. Since the two platforms are not that far. It's not like one has to go up. It's not like from the lower platform you have to go up 20 tefachim. You only have to go up nine tefachim. That's nothing. Even if you had to sling it over and you were actually going up and then down, still, it's within 10 Fahim, it's no big deal. We treat it all as one plane in that case. And therefore, you can't prove anything from here about Shmuel versus Rav. Because according to Rav, Rav will bring this as a proof. One is lowering and one is lifting, and that's why we're giving press. And, and yet, we're not giving precedence to anyone. And Shmuel will say, no, the, the reason why is because they're right next to each other. So, we're not, so it's not, we don't look at a distinction between them at all. We don't care about that one is lifting and lowering. But in a case where there were actually two different places, then we would care. And now the Gemara tries to substantiate this idea that two pl- planes that are within ten fachim of one another are, are judged to be the same plane. Da, um, ki, uh, and kihad amar Rav Nachman, like what Rav Nachman said, amar Shmuel the name Shmuel Gaga Simuch Lo Shutar Abim Tzarech Sulam Kavu Al Hatiro Sulam Kavu In Sulam Arai Lo. So. So what we're talking about is a case which is somewhat complex. Um, it might help. I, I didn't look at the illustrations. Rashi explains it, um, but uh, probably an illustration would come in handy. Yes. So what you have is like this. You have an illustration number two eighty five. A, um, a Rishut Rabin, that's where they always make the street with the little white dashes, which is ac- anachronistic, clearly. And, you know, not to mention the clothing of the people, but, uh, you know, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the, um, the, uh, the, there's a street, okay? So what you have is, you have a mirpeset here. You could walk directly from the street onto this mirpeset. And from the mirpeset, from the platform, onto the roof. It's a low roof. And then you go from the low roof by a, you take a ladder up to the upper story. Okay, so basically there are from ground floor to a mirpeset, from mirpeset to this low roof, from a low roof you take a ladder up to your apartment. Okay, so the issue is there's that no, there's no way this is ten to fahim. I mean, what? ten to fahim is like forty inches, right? Right. So forty inches is like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, more right. Like, you know, at, at this height, it's more like it's not. Yeah, well, it's okay. Maybe it's, it's yeah. not to scale. That's so what anyway, the not to scale. This. So, yeah. This. So, the mere peset, it, right, you wouldn't be able to jump easily. So, it's ten fachim, let's say. So, the point is that the mere peset is within ten fachim, both of the grounds and of the roof. And so, what the Gemara is saying is like this that may, perhaps we should say, just like we're saying about these two protrusions or these two platforms, that since there's less than ten tefachim between the top of the roof and the mir peset, and then again, less than ten tefachim between the mir peset and the rishut harabim, therefore the entire thing is all one thing. Stages. Meaning, yeah, it's in stages, it's, an inc- it's incremental, but really we should say that the roof. And the Rishut Rabim are all one thing because look, the Mir Peset makes sure that there's never a break of ten fachim. In other words, there's never a break of ten fachim between the roof and the Mir Peset, nor between the Mir Peset and the Rishut Rabim. Therefore, we're saying that, that Rishut Rabim, Mir Peset, and roof, they're all one thing. And therefore, if you wanted to carry on the roof, what would you have to do? You would need to put a Sulam Kavua. You would need to have a ladder on that roof going up to the upper apartments. Why? Because having a ladder on that roof going up to the upper apartments means this roof is not so serving the Rishut HaRabim, it's serving the private domain, it's serving the homes, okay? That's why if it's a Sulam Arai, if it's a temporary ladder, it's not good enough. It has to be a permanent one that shows that this roof is not connected to the Rishut HaRabim. But why do you need a Sulam? Why do you need a, a ladder to show that it's not connected to the Rishut HaRabim? Ah, because of the Halakha that we're saying here, that Abaye is saying here, that since these three pla- three increments, basically, gag, you know, the, the, the low roof, 
the Mir Pesed and the Rashut Rabim are all within ten Fahim of one another, we're treating them all as the same unless you put the, the, the ladder there to show that it's not the same. But the Gemara says, no, maybe not. Matkif la Rav Papa, Rav Papa says, no. Vidilma kisherabim mechatfim alav bekumta vesudara. We still can't prove it. Why not? Because it could be that the reason why this, this roof that is ten tfachim from the ground is considered to be part of the Rashut HaRabim and therefore you need to put a ladder on it to show that it's not part of the Rashut HaRabim. It's not because there's a mir peset intervening. It's not because there's a little platform in between the roof and the ground and therefore it's less than ten tfachim from, from the ground to the mir peset and less than ten tfachim from the mir peset to the roof. That's not why we're concerned about the status of the roof being subsumed under the Rashut HaRabim. The reason is because this ten tefah roof is running alongside the Rashut HaRabim and people might put their hat down on it. That's what he says. They might put their sud- the, um, their hats or their turbans kumtav sudara down on it. In other words, they stand. Rashi says sometimes a person will take off their hat so they can have the breeze go by and cool them off, right? So they'll stand next to this and they'll put their hat down on the, uh, on the roof. So you might say, oh look, this roof is really for the Rashut HaRabim. It's serving the street. So that's why you have to put a ladder. But maybe it's not true that the fact that there's less than 10 Tfachim between the roof and the Mir Peset, and then there's less than 10 Tfachim between the Mir Peset and the Rashut HaRabim, maybe that's not significant in and of itself. Maybe we wouldn't normally say that's all one plane. But, but it's because of the usage of the Rashut HaRabim, the direct usage of the Rashut HaRabim of this roof that we're concerned and that we need the, the ladder to be there to show that the roof is not a part of the Rashut HaRabim. Okay, maybe that's why. So we can't prove conclusively one way or another. That okay? would be like the kind of ladder that they told us about that. I don't know if that would be the same. Yeah. So Amar of Yudah Mashmo, one last halacha here. Rav Yudah says in the name of Shmuel, Bor Shebin Shtei Chatzirot Mufleget Mikot Ezar Arba'a O Mikot Ezar Arba'a Zem Motzi Ziz Kolshu Umi Malay Vezem Motzi Ziz Kolshu Umi Malay Verav Yudah Amar Afilu Kanya. So this is the last halacha we'll learn for today. That if you have two Chatzirot that do not have an eruv with one another, and in between the two Chatzirot is basically a pool of water of some sort from which they want to draw water. And the, this pool of water is not within four tvachim of either of the two respective chatzerot. And what, what illustration is that? 287? 287. 287? It's not within four tvachim of either one. So it's easily, it's difficult to access it from either one. So what you do is, you put a ziz kol shehu. You extend a, um, a small plank from your chatzer and you're allowed to draw water from under the plank. Why do you have to extend the plank? Because the, to show as a reminder that normally you wouldn't be able to use such a shared area between these two uncombined chatzerot like this pool. So in order to remember that, we, have to, we make you put an extension from the chatzer over the part of the well that you're going to draw from. And we make the other chatzer extend something from their wall over the part of the pool that they're going to draw from just to remind people that this is an exception to the rule and normally you cannot use shared space. Now, the reason why it mentions that it's more than four tfachim from either one is obviously because if it were within four tfachim of one of them, we would say... It belongs to that one. It's easier access for that one. The other one can't take it. So the fact that it's equal creates a problem. And Rav Yehuda says in the, that uh, um, Rav Yehuda Dide Amar, Rav Yehuda himself said, Afilo Kanya, you don't even need a plank to be extended. Even a, 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 kana, even a reed extending, a thin reed would be enough. In other words, any zecher, anything that will remind you that there's a special dispensation being given here so that you don't extend the rule to other shared spaces between Chatzerot is enough to allow you to take water from the well on Shabbat. So in the end, really, we have not determined... Uh, what the, what the, we've not resolved the machloket between Rav and Shmuel yet. And in fact, in the, in the ensuing Amud, there's going to be more discussion of the case as well. So we still haven't brought it to any definite conclusion because every case that Rav brought to support, to, to every case that was brought to support Shmuel was reinterpreted by Rav. Every case that was brought to support Rav was reinterpreted by Shmuel. So they were still even going toe-to-toe with one another.